I think it's about that time again to start up another hashtag challenge. What's going on guys? My name is Dave and this channel is off grid. I'm into backpacking, hiking, and gear. If you like those things too, please think about subscribing to the channel down below. If you haven't already, I'd greatly appreciate it and it really helps out the channel. Another hashtag that I want to start up here is going to be all about your gear philosophy. So it's going to be hashtag gear philosophy. I really want to know what everybody's philosophy is towards um, the gear that they use, not only from an initial thought and concept perspective of considering buying new gear, but also about using the gear that they currently own and um, how they think about it, what kind of drives somebody in order to make the purchases that they do or to choose certain gear over others. That's really kind of uh, what sparked this idea here. So that's what I want to hear about. So me personally, I have three major bullet points that I'm going to get to today as far as what I use for my own gear philosophy. And I'm going to go in reverse order here. The first two that I'm going to mention going from three up to two is probably not going to come as any surprise. And I think a lot of other people are probably going to use this in their videos. But the first one that I always end up going for. And it might be a little bit surprising to some people, um, but it's still not outside of the realm of what you're probably thinking of anyway. So let's just get into the list right now. At number three, the third thing that I end up thinking about whenever I'm thinking about purchasing new gear or in regards to the gear that I already own is going to be the price point. So the price is definitely super important whenever you're thinking about purchasing gear or um, even using gear too. I've mentioned this before on the channel, but um, you know, whenever I have gear, especially if I spend a decent amount of money on that gear, there's a certain level of mentality that kind of like pops into my head and it doesn't get out of my head. And I keep thinking about um, babying that product if I've spent, you know, X number of dollars on it. So if I've spent a decent amount of money or what I consider a decent amount of money on that piece of gear, then I'm a little bit more afraid to use it. And um, that to me, is something that I don't really want to have. I kind of want to shed that mentality as much as possible so that I am supremely confident with my gear decisions, not only when I purchase it, but when I head out into the backcountry and go to use it. You shouldn't be afraid to use the gear that you own. It's not that I'm afraid, like, you know, I'm afraid it's going to hurt me or anything like that, but I'm afraid because that mentality in the back of my mind is screaming out to me saying, this is super expensive. You got to treat it super nice. And when you're talking about backpacking, you, you don't really treat things nice. You know, you kind of beat it to crap because, you know, you're headed out there, you're stinky, you're sweaty, and you're dealing with a lot of different situations and environments. So being able to baby your gear isn't really necessarily something that you normally think of. So, um, you know, I'm always trying to find that balance in that price point. And... Don't think that because it's number three on my list that price is absolutely the last thing that I think about. All of these bullet points that I'm gonna be talking about today are super important. Um, I just had to rank them in a particular order from one to three. And it's not to say that you guys out there can't have bigger lists than I do. These are just the three main bullet points of what I think of. But um, price is actually super close to my number two, which I'm gonna get to in a hot second. Um, and they usually go hand in hand. And uh, you know, price is definitely always something that I'm thinking about. I think a lot of people have budgets and you always have to maintain that budget um, and try not to break it that much. It is something that is on the tops of pretty much everybody's mind. You definitely have to think about the price point. Um, and if you don't, it can get out of hand. You can spend a lot of money super quickly and it can get pretty dangerous at that point. So you definitely want to make sure that you're keeping the price point in mind. So my number two here is going to be weight. Um, this is probably going to be in a lot of other videos as well, but the weight is definitely something that almost every single backpacker is going to think about. Um, and this challenge is open to pretty much everybody. It doesn't have to be backpackers or through hikers or campers in general. It's just pretty much everybody across the board. But for me personally, I consider myself more of the weekend warrior where I just go out on weekends and then come back to reality after a few days. But, uh, you know, weight is always going to be super important for me. 
And one of the biggest things that I always like to think about is, again, like I said, it kind of goes hand in hand with price. You have to really make sure that something is as lightweight as possible, but also being able to fit into your price point or your budget um, when you're thinking about purchasing new gear. And then, um, you know, as you're using the gear, if you're talking about just kind of using it on every single trip, um, you're gonna be thinking about it. You're gonna be thinking about what's on your back, depending on which trip you're on, depending on the conditions and the elements that you're in, um, you know, a, a 20 pound pack is going to feel not as bad if you're in a situation where it's low humidity and not that many hills and you're not doing that much elevation gains and then that same 20 pound pack could feel a lot heavier if you're sweating buckets and you're doing thousands of feet of elevation gain so um, you know you might want to consider taking out different pieces of gear depending on the type of trip that you're going on so all the different elements all the different factors with your different trips are going to really uh, make you think think about how much base weight you're going to take when you're out on those trips. And that's going to pretty much do it for the weight. So the final bullet point or the number one bullet point that uh, I always end up looking for, I don't think this is going to be on everybody's list, but for me it is of supreme importance. And the number one bullet point for me and my gear philosophy is going to be comfortability. I can't tell you how many times that I have uh, tested it and or bought pieces of gear that wound up being super uncomfortable. Primarily I'm speaking towards um, sleeping pads and pillows. I think sleep is supremely important when you're out in the backcountry, when you're on backpacking trips and you're doing a bunch of miles throughout the days. You have to get good sleep and I have had a few trips now where sleep is uh, you know really destroyed by having a really crappy sleeping system so um, number one has always got to be comfortability for me and I like to use an equation that I've spoken about in a previous um, episode here and it usually goes like this so and it's kind of goes with everything on this list here. It really depends on which one you kind of mix and match. So the equations are like this. Usually if you end up going lower in weight, that also has a direct correlation to your comfortability going down as well. And at the same time, a lot of these are interconnected. When you're going down in weight, the price also goes up. The other thing that I would like to point out is um, just because the price goes up doesn't mean that your comfortability is also going to go up. A lot of times when the weight comes down and the price goes up, that comfortability ends up being stripped away. You're taking less with you when you're out in the backcountry. If you're a through hiker and you're really trying to get that sub 10 pound ultralight pack, then that means that you're not going to be taking things that are going to help you relax and enjoy just kind of sitting around camp. It's really just geared towards having the lightest pack possible so you can go the farthest. So um, you can see how all of these are kind of connected and the one of the biggest things that I've seen as a takeaway for all three of these bullet points is that it's very difficult to cross off all three of these items on my list. Trying to get a super comfortable piece of gear that is also a super lightweight and a decent price um, or a cheap price is almost impossible to find. You're always gonna end up not being able to get at least one of these things on this list. So basically what I choose to try to target for is to get at least two of these items on the list and then you kind of sacrifice on the last one. But for me, comfortability is always gonna be number one, so that has got to trump everything else. And then usually I kind of duke it out between weight and price on the other uh, two bullet points. So it's really important to uh, try to find cheaper, lightweight and comfortable pieces of gear but I always know that like if you're going with a budget style piece of gear that's going to save you money it could also be you know decently comfortable but the weight of it is probably where you're going to sacrifice and you're going to see something that's a little bit heavier than one of the premium options that are out there that's super lightweight so but that also doesn't mean that you know if, for example like a z packs anything like sleeping bag tent backpack they have some of the lightest stuff that's available out in the marketplace it doesn't mean that it's ultimately going to be the most comfortable for you to go out on the trail with um so the price point is also going to kill you on that stuff so you're definitely sacrificing price because it's going to be one of the most expensive things out there and the comfortability it might be there it might not be there but the overall weight is going to be the best so 
it just goes to show you that like, you know, you're usually sacrificing at least one of these types of categories. And again, I try to shoot to cross off at least two out of these three. And sometimes you get lucky and you're able to cross off all three. I can't think of anyone just yet um, <laughs> that comes to mind as far as like something that really just hits all across the board. But I've come pretty close with uh, a bunch of my gear in finding, you know, some decently priced or cheaper end gear that's also pretty comfortable. Uh, but the weight is just not like the lightest that you can get um, when you're out there in the backcountry. So that's going to do it for my gear philosophy, guys. I really appreciate you watching this one. I'm kicking this one off and uh, starting off another hashtag. So it is my duty to start this one off right and tag a couple people. The first one that I'm going to tag is going to be Dan over at Backpacking Adventures. Um, he's my YouTube buddy, and I know he's going to come through for me because he always does. And he's got a great channel. Definitely head on over, check him out, subscribe to his channel, like every single one of his videos, and uh, show him some love but he's got a, a great channel he's over on the east coast in pennsylvania so he's the first one that i'm going to tag for this one the second channel that i like to tag would be jason from huck outdoors um, he's another local he's actually pretty close to me in the socal area um, he's got a great channel again go check him out like all his videos he's got some great stuff he does a lot of like cooking in the back country he does a lot of fishing trips too um, just great overall channel bunch of different trips that he goes on he does a bunch of gear reviews too um, so definitely head on over and check his channel out and actually I'm gonna throw in a third channel here and the third one that I'd like to tag and this is going to be a little bit of a reach for me but I'm gonna tag Bryce from Bryce Newbold and his channel um, he's a, a great guy hilarious channel he's got some great content so definitely make sure that you check out his channel so all you guys have been tagged I want to make sure that this gets going right I really Really want to know and want to hear from not only all of you out there who are watching this video but also these other youtubers what your gear philosophy is what do you think about what goes through your mind when you're thinking about your different gear choices not only when you're purchasing it but also when you are out in the backcountry when you're out in the field actually using this stuff what kind of goes through your brain when you're thinking about the different gear that you own so that's gonna do it for me this week if you want to check out another video where I kind of spell out some more tips on how to to purchase your gear or what kind of things you should think about when you're purchasing your gear I'll throw that up right over here thanks so much for watching this week guys appreciate you and remember if you're heading off grid make sure you do your research and you make it a safe one I'll see you on the next one